So today we are in the beautiful Los Angeles, nice sunny weather as always, and we're going to talk about this beautiful SUV that's a 2015 Chevy Tahoe, and that's a famous taco in Los Angeles, and it's a high demanded car, as you can see right now, you might going to check it out what's going on on the used car market, like use different platforms, and see how much those cars going for, the used one, 2015, 2016, with about 100,000 miles, they go in my opinion, insanely high. So you cannot find 4x4 2015-16 Tahoe for less than, I would say, 24, 25,000. That's kind of a lot, but if you're gonna compare with the new prices, so this car was about 70,000 when it was brand new, and right now that's about the same, uh, I would say it's not that much down because for 15, 16,000, that kind of Tahoe, you cannot buy it. You can only buy maybe salvage or high mileage or the previous body, previous years, you might gonna find it as well. But what I do like about this car, that's a multi-purpose SUV and it's good for your family, it's good for the traveling, it's good for the business, any kind of business you're doing, or it's good to pull something if you wanna move out of state uh, or you wanna just put the jet ski and go places, some lake, whatever, enjoy your nice weather and nice day if your family in jet ski, you can do so. And it doesn't matter if it's four by four or two wheel drive, this car still gonna allow you to make it. So the car itself, it's super simple, it's super easy going and the doors are huge, the interior inside the space, that's just a lot enough for any kind of size of family or your friends or you want to take the trip to Vegas, you gonna be really comfortable, enjoyable uh, in this car during your ride. So what I don't like about this car, number one, that's the headlights. Headlights and light itself, it just insanely bad and I don't understand why they didn't put any kind of fog lights or why they didn't go with LED light all the way for all the cars because at night with this kind of headlights it just I would say it's super bad especially in LA when you can drive on the street and some homeless guy just laying down on the curb you know smoking or doing something you might not gonna see him just because your headlights it's kind of dark it's not that light the way it's supposed to be for the huge SUV like that. So what else I like? I like besides the space and all the seats, for example, you want to put some people on the back, again, maybe your friends, maybe your family, and uh, you don't have enough space to put your stuff, put your luggages or whatever stuff you have with you during the trip. You can, you can put the roof rack and all the stuff going to go on the top of your car. That's easy to do so and there is a lot of platforms you can buy different kind of roof rack or different kind of uh, boxes the one you're gonna put it on the roof so it is a huge it is a big car it is burning a lot of gas the engine in my opinion it's one of the strongest one for the SUV or the trucks that's the famous LS engine and you can do a lot of modification with that I did see some Tahoe, they put supercharger in the middle of the car or on the side of it, depends what kind of supercharge you bind for this engine. And still, even the factory engine with original pistons and all the components inside, it's gonna hold that pressure, the one you wanna put it on this car. Maybe the hoses, like cooling system, whatever, you have to update it a little bit, you have to make a little bit more open space for it or do the bigger radiator, and you're gonna be fine, believe me or not. So the suspension, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of old style. There is nothing, there is nothing to worry about it. Maybe your shock's gonna go bad, but they super cheap to replace. The brakes are cheap. So this car right now, it has 80 tires, not MT, it has 80 tires. So basically I can go off-road, I can go by sand, or I can do some dirt, or I can do the snow, and I can drive in the city without noise inside the car. That's cool. I mean, whoever owned this car before, it looks like they were taking care of it because it has 110,000 miles and it's in beautiful shape. It doesn't have any uh, previous damages on the Carfax and I can see all the paint around the car is still factory. Uh, it's not peeling off like the common problem for the Chevy. Maybe it was somewhere in the garage or covered, but it's not peeling off. 
only the plastic thing right like on the side that trim it is kind of cracked clear already you can see it but in general it is in a great shape and there is one thing was one of the car the one i got it and i'm gonna tell you later about it again it didn't cost me that much to fix it and the guy who fixed it he did it super fast and uh, I wasn't surprised because like I say, LS usually it's easy to do so. Even the transmission, if I'm getting that kind of car and transmission is gone, I have a, a lot of different guys, but I'm calling them, towing the car, or driving there. One, two days, the car is ready because million parts available for different kind of price. You can go cheaper with Chinese parts. You can go with original parts and you're still gonna get the good result, but the original parts, they might gonna keep longer. The Chinese one, they might gonna keep you with good transmission a little bit less but for 50,000 miles any rebuild transmission supposed to work and i think for you as a for me it's more than enough for the money you're paying on that labor so like i said the headlights they not so good and the light itself at night it's super poor i don't understand why because this car has a lens and it's supposed to be led light but they put regular halogen halogens so if i'll put the aftermarket xenon light right now on those headlights it's not going to work well so basically i still not going to be able to see what's going on in front of my car but all the drivers in front of me they're going to be shocked by that light that's what's always happening with me when i see those people driving the old carola with xenon light it's just the light going everywhere so again i don't understand why they didn't do that one plus you do have a spot for your fog light and sometimes you you see the fog lights they are present why you cannot do the fog lights for all the cars especially this one lt it has a lot of options like the moonroof like the line keeper and all that kind of stuff but we are missing the fog lights that's unbelievable in my opinion so the front end of the car it is beautiful as always tahoe and gmc they doing a lot of chrome uh, panels even the silverado they are beautiful because the radiator grill is super huge it's super uh, chromey and uh, you can do blackout but again in my opinion the way factory made it it's much better unless you have a black tesla and you have a chrome moldings around the windows and you want to get rid of that that's the good point to do so but on the white tahoe i wouldn't do the, those because the chrome pieces they just the way it's supposed to be on this car so it is a huge car and under the hood we do have that huge v8 engine 5.3 but as soon as i open the hood you're going to see there is more space and uh, you can go with v10 if you do have one or you can put the supercharger and still going to be covered or you can do a lot of extra different stuff under the hood if you want to lift it up put big tires and rims on it and put like the air compressor under the hood you can do so because the space under the hood just insane and i'm going to show it to you right now So let's check it out what's going on under the hood so the hood we do have uh, i think i believe so it is aluminum or it's a super it's a super skinny metal no it is aluminum hood it's super light so the space under the hood like i said there is uh, something else you can put there is something else you can put there is a front end so it is kind of safe car because i did see a lot of those cars after the accident it is saving lives just because you do have not maybe two meters in front of you but about one and a half meter that's uh, that's going to protect you and your family in case of something going to happen uh super easy some of the parts you can see that's like old style and uh not a lot of modern components on the engine or super like vvt systems it's just simple easy to use easy to fix you can do a lot of things yourself and i think that's the american engineer engineering uh used to be and actually not used to be actually they doing it right now but not in diesel cars diesel cars it's kind of hard to fix and you have to uh you have to know a little bit more than just a gas engine ls like this one but again easy nice simple uh not expensive so it is a good point it is a good choice to do so again if you compare those prices with the prices for the comparable suv but what are you going to compare the cadillac gmc it is the same car but about 25 27 000, what you can buy you can buy bmw x5 it's not the same because the size of the car is not the same and the 4x4 the way 4x4 works on the tahoe it is not the same as a bmw again what's next next 
you're gonna check the Mercedes. Mercedes 4x4 system, not the same. If you're gonna go with GLS or GL, uh, it is a little bit smaller. It is more complicated car. It is beautiful car. Don't get me wrong. I do love Mercedes, especially GLS, especially like 63 AMG. I love it a lot, but it is complicated car. It needs more attention. It needs more money for the maintenance. And uh, Tahoe, that's the way it goes because the payment you're going to do for the car if you do in the finance the payment for insurance that's probably all you need to do maybe save some money for the gas for long trips but mercedes bmw it's always unpredictable and uh, the money you have in the pocket to do the maintenance it's always not enough so you have to use the credit cards or you maybe have to borrow money from someone just to cover the expenses for the german used cars but the tahoe it is a much more predictable car so a lot of pieces on this car is just beautiful like for example this spoiler on the top of the trunk it's a white right but we do have that uh, black piece black trim it just looks so insane so what else we can get we are getting the glass opening separate and you can put some stuff in the trunk without opening the huge door sometimes you have a lot of bags and you just don't want to open this one just because your bag's going to go down so you can open the glass and you can get an access to your stuff in the trunk that's actually the common problem for the chevy and jmc you know this one just needs to be welded and it looks like somebody tried to put glue but it's never gonna work because you have to do welding for that so that's a nice option now we open in the trunk area the trunk area just insanely huge the spare tire we do have it under the car and here we do have a tow hitch so what else there is a third road seat there is a lot of space you can you can actually sleep in the car if you're going to put those seats back you're going to get enough space maybe not your family but for three or four of your family you can lay down and sleep in the car that makes this car super universal in my opinion and there is a nice protection cover for your trunk area so there is some <clears throat> so there's some boxes some components you can use it as a uh, you can use it as a storage for your needs during the trip and those seats i can pull them up but actually i do have to pull them up you know why to show it to you it has three uh, passenger seats on the third row that was super interested for me because i never pay attention on that until yesterday so is this car people using it as a limousine there is a lot of space right here but like i say and i want to show it to you there is a three seats on the back it's not that huge again maybe it's only for the kids but in case you really want to push your friends and put them here you can do so there is one two three there is a belt on the side and there is one more in the roof for the middle passenger that's just a cool option besides that on the third row there is a mm, cup holder the chargers ah there is some other sh that sh is it easy to go is it easy to go on the third road yes it is so we are driving this famous tahoe uh, suv over the years over the old generation i mean every single one generation of this car it's been so famous and so popular two wheel drive all wheel drive long wheel base uh suburban or uh just regular Tahoe it's always on demand doesn't matter what's the mileage in it because you are getting a less engine Chevy which is so simple to fix like uh, like this car when I got it it was kind of misfire right and uh, so what was done uh, my mechanic basically he changed the lifters on the one head and it was kind of simple so he check it out in the morning the car was smoking a lot doing misfire and uh, I knew there is nothing wrong, not, nothing seriously. So you don't have to take the engine apart to fix it. So basically he pulled out uh, the part of the head because whoever knows that engine, you have a lower camshaft and you have a push roads and the lifters on the top. So it's kind of easy to work on. Even if you want to do the head job, it's not that hard. Uh, so, and he find out the lifters, they were stuck. So besides just do the one cylinder, he did all of them. And by the end of the day, he called me back. He said, your car is ready. Do you want to come pick it up today or tomorrow? I'm like, wow, that's super fast. That's the kind of car you get in. So it's a simple 
to drive, it's simple to use, it's uh, low cost maintenance. I mean, there is a always common problem with transmission just because, again, there is a, a lack of service, lack of maintenance, and uh, the way people are using it. So, not using it, abusing it, especially Suburbans, the one uh, uh, used for Uber and Lyft or any limo company, they don't care what's going to happen. Uh, with the transmission they just drive in the way they want it but in my opinion it's super simple car and that's why over the generations i would say because the car uh become famous famous since 90s and uh, the old one 90s right now with low mileage they're super expensive they they cost more money than this one why probably because it's like i say super simple most of them are comes as a flex fuel so basically what you can do instead of putting 87 91 gas you can put 85 ethanol that's kind of cheaper but your mpg is going to go down so because the gas e85 it's kind of tricky so it has one or two uh, it has one or two actually the petroleum quality and it's kind of burning faster so that's why your MPG gonna go down. But the cost of the gas, especially right now in LA, when we see the, the prices for the gas between five, five, six, today I saw 6.99 on the Ventura Boulevard. 6.99 for 87 gallon of it. That's just insane. So basically to drive the taco, I put 50 bucks and I barely got half of the tank. It's kind of costly, it is, but you are getting that kind of car you have to spend money on the gas just because you want to move around with a lot of people inside the car maybe you want to put the foot in half of it not the half because this car has eight seats so and i just find out yesterday actually i knew always the second row it has three seats right because it has three belts but when i opened the third row because my kids they they like to play on the third row on those kind of cars so i open it i'm like what it has one more seat belt for the middle uh, passengers. So basically, there's two benches, six passengers in the back. You have two passengers on the front. So it comes to eight passengers in this car, and it's four by four. Wow, wow. So it's like the car for your lifestyle. Whatever you do, you want to use it for work, you want to use it for uh, any trips. You're more than welcome to do so. Uh, you want to go mountains, I don't know, skiing. You want to pull something the car gonna let you do so and the engine i did see a lot of engines like the same engine as the silverado corvette modified but anyway it's kind of the same so silverado 300,000 miles 400,000 miles the engine still working fine and drives great transmission like i say but again it's not that costly to fix it because it's a common problem and all transmission shops they know about it so they're not charging crazy money for it i mean for four by four if you want to open the transfer case and replace something in the transfer case in case you know to protect yourself for the future uh repairs you can do transmission and transfer case both together so you might gonna spend about 23 2400 so that's not that much for the car again you get it so what about the interior interior of this car it's kind of practical there is a lot of different things which is super um super useful like there is a pockets in the doors there is a lot of different pockets it's only one door and it, i do have a lot of different pockets that's super cool in uh, the middle central console has a super huge box you can probably put the baby and it's going to be nine seats not eight it is huge what i don't like i don't like the the way they made it so the ac vents the heater fan uh, vents whatever the in the middle of the central console they kind of covering when you put in your uh, transmission shifter to the D drive position. So basically, I wanna I want air to go to my face, but I'm covering half of it, so it's going to nowhere. The second thing I don't understand: who designer who made that kind of stuff? Not only on the Tahoe, there is a Malibu, there is a uh, uh, how you call it Impala, some other cars. So the the big screen, the one you get in, you can do this thing. So you're doing this thing and you have in the box, like security box or whatever, and it has USB. So you want to what? You want to put your phone there and uh, plug it to USB so you're not going to be able to see it. That's that's the part. I kind of don't understand why they did so. But again, it's kind of cool. Uh, if you know any other car who can do like that, well, let me know because I do not know 
besides the Chevy, who has that kind of pocket uh, behind the screen. That's cool. What about the AC? This car, it's a LT with some extra packages. For example, it has a moonroof, usually LT, some that does, some that not. So it has a three zone climate control, the one in the back. There were two on the front, two zones, I mean. So you can separate it. You can do different type of uh, temperature on the back, on the front. That's what we see, super strong. Again, it's an old style, old fashioned engine and old style AC. There is a different uh, temperature sensors inside the car, so basically that's why it's climate control, but still it is super cold AC when your system running normally. So as you probably know, this car, uh, 2015, it's a, it's a first year for the new generation since 2015 and up, but in reality, it's the same body, kind of same uh, conception of the frame and the body, matter together since 2007 so on the back we do have a single axle uh, built with differential so that's why suspension is not that soft as it could be on the front we do have a suspension McPherson so but again it's not it is comfortable super comfortable car because I think the angles for the suspension they kind of high and uh, that's why it makes this car not so heavy drivable but same time a mm, little bit wavy a little bit like bouncy just because of the old style suspension but same time it's easy to maintain it cheap and uh, if you compare the same car with gmc or the cadillac it is exactly the same car and engines they do have a 6.2 also gmc and the, the chevy they do have it as an optional, but most of the time it's 5.3, but sometimes you can find 6.2 if you really want a GMC, it's more common. So between all those three cars, all those three uh, SUVs, if you want to choose the Cadillac, you want to pay a little bit extra to get more extra, like, I don't know, like luxury, whatever, some, some labels, Cadillac, not Chevy, you can do so. But at the end of the day, you get a same car, same transmission, suspension, engine, and the way it drives, it just... It's just gonna be different on uh, on your logo. That's it. So that's one of the point was for me when I ordered my uh, new Tahoe, the one supposed to come later on right now. So I was thinking between uh, Escalade diesel and uh, Tahoe diesel. So I decided I'm gonna go with Tahoe diesel just because 30,000 less on an MSRP, but it's exactly the same car. Not exactly, but it is the same car, same concept. Why I should overpay for the car what I need for some purposes of my life so basically I need a lifestyle car which can fit all my needs for all my family and I don't want a Cadillac because I'm not that type of guy who's gonna drive Ferrari just because it is a Ferrari so that's the point for me if for you there is a different point and you want to go with Escalade or uh, GMC Yukon you can do so why not so like I said there is a multi-purpose car as a this SUV so if you wanna if you're ready to drive this car for uber for some reason your lifestyle is switching and you were uh you now open to do more flexible job like the uber driver right for the tahoe but you got the tahoe and it's white color what are you gonna do you're gonna spend about 2500 just to do wrap and make this car black so now you can drive uber xl or uber black or whatever you want you can use it only for the uh, limo party or something like that when you're gonna get more money so it's one of the point you get in this type of car and you can use it for work not only drive around but you can you can make money from it you know and make the payment for the car make the money for the gas and Tahoe can let you do so good job mm -hmm. so what about the options we're getting like I said there is a moonroof there is a heated seats it's a heated it's not cool it's like the same year exactly the same Yukon I just sold it it was a uh, cool heated seats and it was a nice option here we do have a, like I say climate control we do have a uh, multimedia system but no navigation on it we do have a line keeper assist and also we do have a emergency brake uh, what is that assistance like the, the one I do have a small screen on the dashboard so it's not blinking red if somebody coming closer means not somebody coming closer means I'm not pushing the brakes on time so we do have a parking sensors on the front and the back and this car like I say it is a 4x4 uh, with transfer case 
and we do have a low gear, high gear, and we do have an auto. So what means auto when you're going somewhere on the snow on the dirt and your rear axle starts spinning, the front wheel drive just kicking it automatically. That's what auto means, and sometimes it is helpful. Sometimes. So the space in the car for the passengers, all the passengers are gonna be uh, feeling comfortable, like the driver, like me right now. I'm like I say, I'm not a skinny, uh, short guy. I do have enough space for myself. And what's really cool about this car, the front windows and the windshield not tinted, and uh, driving during the sun I and mean, during the day under the sun, it's not so hot. Somehow, I mean, even the square design of the body made it the way. I'm not feeling the sun really hard during and driving this square car. That's nice and uh, it is comfortable, it is adjustable. Uh, steering wheel, like the old style again, kind of, it's cool. Like it. And uh, we do have a gas and brake pedal adjustable. I mean, it is from like 90s on the old Cadillac Chevy, even the 40s, you have that. That's a cool option. And the uh, the cool point, they still saving it. They not, even the new one, they do have the same option. So they basically go in the same project, whatever they build in 90s. So it means uh, it is a kind of not demand, but it's desirable for the consumers who's buying those kind of cars. So at the end of the story, what I want to say, this car is so popular, so famous, and it's been used for different purposes. For example, that's a lifestyle. Like I said, there is a taxi, limo company. Besides that, police, FBI, uh, and more any other agencies they've been using this car and they're still using it like the border patrol because this car it's on high demand like i say it's super durable it is like dependable car and um, it's just a tahoe the name of the car tells itself about the whole history about what's going on right now and about how you can trust this car or not so thank you so much for watching it put some thumbs up put some comments below ask me if you want to ask me something or share your story about your car about your SUV whatever you're driving right now even if it's not Tahoe I'm glad to see that and reply something from my experience thank you so much guys and I'll see you in my next video